be hearing about Lucas Moore all the time. You go into Twitter, you go into the internet. Everyone's talking about this player that Manchester United are bid for. So we decided here at Sports Tonight Live to actually tell you a bit about him. Have a look at this. This is Lucas Moura, obviously, in the shot. Uh, there are his stats. Uh, played for four clubs, made his debut against Scotland uh, in 2011, and he's got 15 caps. Now, what you can't see on that, uh, on that caption is that he's right-footed, he's five foot eight, he, and despite his height, uh, he's relatively strong, got a lot of good upper body strength. You look at his arms already. He looks as though he's, you know, he's, he's got a yeah, lot I mean, of... I, th I think what's really exciting, Darren, is that um, for the first time in, you know, perhaps ever, mm. Brazilian players are coming from Brazil mm. straight to England. I mean, obviously we know why. It's because of the, the money and they've just got you know, the new TV deal. Mm. The Premier League have got th three billion pounds over three years. So it's going to be absolutely a wash with, with cash for this sort of marquee player over the years. Um, but, you know, in terms of the Premier League as a, as a product and what the fans are watching, you know, mm. the great talent's coming over here. Absolutely. Oscar's already, you know, he's going to join Chelsea. Yeah. That deal's done. Um, Mora, you know, is... is Possibly going to join Manchester United. Not, not, it's not probable yet. I don't think. Mm. Still a bit of, um, you know, to go on that one. No, but, but you're right because I mean you've got the likes of uh, David Luiz at Chelsea. Yeah. You've got Ramirez. I know they didn't come straight yeah. to this country. I know mm. they went to Benfica mm. and whatever else. But the big Brazilian players are coming here in the prime of their careers or early Sa in their Sa careers. Sandro as well. Sandro as well, and they're talking about Leandro Damião coming to Spurs as well Absolutely. from the same club. Interesting with these stats as well because he does look as though a player, as though he's a player on the up. Uh, you look in 2010, four goals, four assists, but then there's an increase in those goals and assists the more games he plays in the following season. And then you look at 2012, 36 uh, appearances, nine goals and just as many assists as the previous year. I mean, for his age, the stats are good, aren't they? Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. He's not even 20 until uh, until next month, and he's had 104 uh, appearances, and he's been involved in 46 goals, which tells you that he's going to be involved in a goal every nearly every two games. So he's obviously going to be worth his weight in gold now. Mm. I, I'll go back to what I said right at the beginning. If Man United paid 26 million, they are looking to sell him to Real Madrid in three or four years' time mm. for the 80 like they did Ronaldo. Yeah, but the thing is, I can't see them selling for 26 million. They know what they've got. And I agree with you as well. I don't think they need him. I know a lot of people are very, very excited about Lucas Moura. But I think Manchester United would be stronger if they get an experienced striker. What, 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 well, or defender. What, 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 go we, miss. what mm. we do know, though, is that they were in for Eden Hazard. You know, obviously, they, didn't, they couldn't um, pay the same package that Chelsea could and probably mm. the Man City could. But they were, you know, they were in for him. And so he's Ferguson is obviously looking for an attacking midfielder, mm. and I you know Lucas Moura seems to fit the bill um, that, that Hassan was. You know, beh playing behind the main striker, in the three positions behind the main striker, but, but, he would be. But the thing is, he's not, he's, he's not going to be a goal machine. He's going to need time to develop, yeah. and United don't have that but time. They, and that's they, what strikes me. Is Nani going to be there in twelve months' time? Well, it's a good question. You know, is, he, is he grooming someone to replace Nani, or, or no, I think Valencia's more likely to stay, but to replace Nani in twelve months' time? Is he grooming someone for that? Nani hasn't signed a new contract yet. Um, you know, is, is a year sort of adapted to the Premier League, and then Nani leaves to go and to not, um, Spain or Italy. And let's well, not forget, we need a left. I Man United need a left back as well. He's got all sorts of positions. We're talking about the attackers got there. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but he has because he's just let Rafael go. Yeah. And and uh, Fabio, uh, the other one, Fabio. he's looking yeah, at Leighton Fabio. Baines in that position, yeah, yeah. as we know. Yeah, so I mean, that's going to cost him a few quid, doesn't it? I, I do want to deal with some of the questions you are posing. So mm. what I've done, I've roped in Chris Atkins. He knows far more than me. He's a Brazilian expert. He's waiting to speak to us on the phone. Evening, Chris. Hello, Darren. Uh, now, you've heard us talking about Lucas Moura and also questioning about whether or not Manchester United need him. Good player, undoubtedly, 19 years old, obviously on an upward trajectory. But do Manchester United need him? And can he do what Sir Alex wants to do next season and win the title back for United? Or would he be a long-term investment? Well, I think, given his age, he'd definitely be a long-term investment. But... In terms of whether he's what Man United need, that, that is the big question. Uh, everyone's obviously looked at their possible frailties in midfield and also uh, a weakness at left-back with only one uh, senior left-back on the books at the moment. So there are other positions that would seem to need strengthening first. But you guys will you know, you'll know as well as I do, Sir Alex has he's done this in the past. When he, when he spots a special talent, he goes for it. He just he seems to have that that feeling sometimes that you know what this is a player that's that suited to playing at a club like Man United. And I think in this case 
it may be a bit of a reaction to City winning the league, but I think that's what's happened in this case. He's seen a player who he thinks is worthy of pulling on the Man United shirt. Now, Chris, um, his first big tournament was a South American under-20 championship, uh, and he was in the same team as Neymar. Uh, both of them were key players. Neymar, well, I'll ask you, which of the two do you believe has progressed more since then? Because that championship was in, uh, what was it, January 2011. Which of the two pro players has progressed more for you? I think uh, there's no question Neymar's ahead in his progression. And he's a, he's a year older than Lucas, but he, he was already ahead at that point. But he, he's definitely the, the more mature of the two players. And uh, it provides more consistent product than, than Lucas. Lucas does have games where he's very ineffective and he can string together runs of five or six games where where that happens. But then again, when, when he's on form, uh, he, he's potentially um, almost, I would say, as good as Neymar. But Neymar is undoubtedly, I would say, the better prospect. And his price tag proves that. Lucas, the price being quoted is very high, in my opinion. Uh, he he isn't, as I said, always that consistent. But at 19 years old, he can't really expect that. No. Uh, Neymar and uh, I guess the likes of Messi, who do perform at that age, are are fairly unique talents. Now, um, they say he's the most prodigious talent to come out of the Sao Paulo Academy since Kaká. Um, is that justified, or is that a lot of pressure on his young shoulders? <laughs> It's, it's quite interesting because Sao Paulo is probably one of the more prolific academies in Brazil. And uh, alongside him, you'll have seen uh, in the team that played Team GP the other night, uh, you have Oscar, who's also a, a product of the Sao Paulo Academy. So I would think there'd be some competition between those two over that, that mantle. And uh, we've seen Chelsea obviously spending a lot of money on Oscar in the last uh, week or so. And should, it looks like that deal will be completed on Friday now. What the Oscar deal to Chelsea? Uh, that's what that's what the reports in Brazil have been saying today. And what is the fee they're talking about over there? Uh, the figure being quoted for Oscar is the same as in the the British media, so about twenty five million pounds. Um, do you think both players will come? Do you think Lucas Moura will come? Yeah, I think undoubtedly, if there's an offer from the likes of Man United or Chelsea on the table, they're not going to turn it down. I know Neymar. It's proving to be a bit of an exception in that he he stayed in Brazil longer than many expected him to. But Lucas and Oscar, they they don't maybe have the same attachment to their clubs as Neymar has to Santos. It's also Santos' centenary year this year, which was a, a special reason that Neymar did point out that he wanted to stay this year. But in, in terms of that, every young Brazilian player, despite the the increasing strength of the league down there. They all want to play in the Champions League. Yeah. That's where, if, if you like, the modern legends of, of football are made and they all want to play on that level. Chris, Wait. Chris, the traditional path for Brazilian players is to go usually go to Portugal or sometimes Spain or sometimes Italy. What do you think is attracting, you know, these brilliant young Brazilian players to England at the moment? Is it just purely money? I think it might also be a bit of change on the parts of the clubs. There was there was a bit of a feeling for a long time that Brazilian players weren't that suited to the Premier League, and maybe with the with the changing style that we've seen over the last few years, it's gone a bit more uh, technical based. I think a lot of the clubs are now starting to see that Brazilian players can do very well here, and likewise the players have seen a change in the league. They always preferred the style of Spain or Italy, but now. They're starting to see the, you know what, uh, look at Tevez, look at Aguero. Yeah. These kind of diminutive attackers can, can strive in the Premier League. And they're, they're seeing those examples and thinking, well, that could be me. I could play at Old Trafford. I could play at Stamford Bridge and I could make a name for myself. I think every young player who comes up in South America thinks of that when they think of the Premier League. Chris, really good to have you on. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Chris Atkins, Hi, thank you. our Brazilian expert, uh, talking about the youngster Lucas Moura.